My name is Robert Martiniano. I am the Senior Program Manager at the Center for Health Workforce Studies at the University at Albany School of Public Health. This webinar is part of a series of resources on how to conduct a community needs assessment. Today's presentation focuses on how to prioritize community needs once data analysis has been completed. While there are a number of approaches for prioritizing community needs, this webinar will focus on two. The first approach we will discuss is the weighted criteria matrix, which is more of a mathematical approach. The second, the dot voting method, is more visual and participatory. Prioritization is the last step in a process that assesses and identifies needs in a community. It ultimately helps identify interventions for competing needs, especially when resources are scarce. Now let's take a look at the two approaches. The weighted criteria matrix uses a mathematical method by assigning values and weights to both the criteria used for scoring and the score themselves. There are five steps to this approach. The first step in this approach is to identify the health issues within your community that you would like to address or improve. The number of health issues may vary or funders may limit your focus to particular community issues. For example, state programs for maternal and child health may want you to focus on infant outcomes such as birth weight, infant mortality, preterm births, and access to prenatal care. The next step is developing criteria for assessing the health issues. The criteria can look at the need for additional resources, the effectiveness of current strategies, and the availability of funding. Criteria can be grouped together like in this example, but they do not necessarily have to be. This method works best for 8 to 10 criteria, but you need to consider what to include and you should spend considerable time identifying your criteria. For example, you may want to assess availability of funds. Something may be important, but if substantial resources are already dedicated to it, you may wish to focus on another issue. Step three is to assign weights to the criteria. Weights are based on a numerical scale, and in this case, 0.5, 1, and 2, and should represent relative importance of each of the criteria. In this example, the criteria stakeholder survey, which is weighted at 0.5, was the least important criteria, while the quartile severity score, which received a score of 2, or a weight of 2, was the most important. As you decide the weights, consider both the number of the weight categories and the range between the lowest and highest weight. This will ultimately impact on how close or distant your aggregate scores are for your issues. The next step is to develop a grading system. Similar to the previous steps, consider the number of scoring categories and the range between the highest and lowest scores. In the example here, we use three scores, one, three, and five. Again, as indicated in the previous slide, the number of scoring categories and the distance between the highest and lowest score will impact on how close or distant your aggregate scores are. Once the grading system has been developed, the next step in the process is to actually score the issues based on the criteria. In this example, we assigned a score of five under the severity criteria to preterm births, but only assigned a score of one to access to prenatal care under the stakeholder survey criteria. As you can see, we assign different scores to different criteria based on the healthcare issue. Ultimately, creating a priority score is a matter of multiplying their criteria score by their criteria weight and then adding all the sums together. In this example, infant mortality has a severity score of five and a criteria weight of two. Five times two equals 10. The stakeholder survey criteria column also has a score of five, but a weight of only 0.5. Multiplied together, this criteria receives a score of 2.5. The perceived need for additional resources on the far right column receives a score of 7.5. Then you add each of these criteria scores together. In this case, 10 plus 2.5 plus 7.5 equals 20. 20 is the largest total compared to the total scores of the other health issues 
making infant mortality the top priority. Now that we've reviewed the weighted criteria matrix, let's look at dot voting. In this process, community stakeholders come together to identify health issues and then to vote to determine the priorities. The first step in this process is to brainstorm potential health issues that may need to be addressed. This part is usually done by consensus without regard to what may be the most pressing issue in the community. In this example, you can see that we identify nine issues to vote on. Once the health issues have been identified, the next step is distributing the dots. One common approach to determine the number of dots per person is taking one-third of the issues identified plus one. In this example, since nine issues were identified, each participant would get one-third of nine plus one, or four voting dots. There should be less dots per person than the number of issues that were identified to ensure that priorities are identified. Regardless, the number of dots should be enough to clearly identify the most pressing issues without overwhelming the participants. Let's take a small step back. Prior to voting, voting guidelines should be established. You can either require that participants use only one dot per issue or allow them to place as many dots as they wish on an issue. If you allow voters to place more than one dot on an issue, you may want to consider increasing the number of dots you give to each participant. Once everyone has the appropriate number of dots, the voting can begin. Once voting is complete, you can clearly identify which are the top priorities. In this example, you can see that maternal and infant health is the top priority to be addressed in this community. We have reviewed two approaches for prioritizing need as part of developing a community needs assessment. This is one of several resources we have on community needs assessment which you can access in the resource section on the HWTAC website. Please email me if you have any further questions. Thank you and have a good day.